Welcome back to the one and only English news program in the National Television of Timor Leste. And here is the compilation of the news for today. With me, Vanessa. Chinese Yuan strengthens to strongest level in 13 months. The central parity rate of the Chinese currency, renminbi or the yuan, hit a 30-month high against the US dollar. According to the China Foreign Exchange Trade System, 286 pips to 6.8605 against the US dollar, the highest level since July 2019. It is 0.42% firmer than the previous fix, 6.8891. The latest report from the China Banking Association shows demand for the Chinese yuan rose in cross-border transactions in the first half of 2020. The yuan's rally also comes as the US dollar is poised to register its fourth consecutive monthly decline. In China's spot foreign exchange market, the yuan is allowed to rise or fall by 2% from the central parity rate each trading day. The central parity rate of the yuan against the US dollar is based on the weight average of prices offered by market markers before the opening of the interbank market each business day. The economic ministers from China and ASEAN members hope to boost trade investment for economy recovery. Economic ministers from China and the Association of Southeast Asian Nations members' country welcomed the robust growth of their bilateral trade and investment despite impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. According to the joint statement of the consultations at the 19th ASEAN Economic Ministers and China Ministry of Commerce consultations held via video link, the ministries regard the growth as a demonstration of the resilience and the huge potential of trade and economic cooperation between China and the ASEAN. In the statement says, noting that last year, the total merchandise trade between the two sides reaches 507.9 billion US dollars and foreign direct investments flows from China to ASEAN total 9.1 billion US dollars. And here reaffirms the importance of strengthened cooperation to promote trade and investments for economic recovery. Economic ministers from the 10 ASEAN member countries, China, Japan and South Korea, reaffirms their commitment to take collective actions in mitigating the economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Attending the 23rd ASEAN Economic Ministers Plus 3 consultations via video link, the ministries underscore the importance of bringing back businesses' confidence to facilitate post-pandemic recovery. They agreed to intensify coordinated efforts in promoting economic and social resilience in the region, including through signing of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. The ministries resolved to ensure macroeconomic and financial stability by keeping the markets open for trade, investments, and ensuring the supply chain connectivity and reiterate the need for cooperative efforts to facilitate the essential movement of business people across the borders. The ministries also recognize the importance of harshening opportunities of the digital economy by facilitating cross-border transfer of information and data by electronic. Fall of Malaysian airliner MH17 ahead of trial resumption. The trial of a suspect in the 2040 donning of a Malaysia Airlines flight over eastern Ukraine is set to resume with judges preparing to hear the testimony of victims' relatives and possibly witnesses put forward by the defendants. We all have one motherland, Russia, and we are all one people. You and us, we need to unite. We need to unite to stand for our rights, the rights of our people for the future, for life. According to the Dutch prosecutors, flight MH17 from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur was deliberately shot down by the BUK missile fired by pro-Russian forces in Ukraine who obtains the missile launcher from a Russian army base just across the border. After nearly six years of research by international investigators, four defendants went on trial in March over the donning of flight MH17 which killed or 298 aboard. The four Russians, Sergei Dubinsky, Oleg Pulatov, Igor Gherkin, and Ukrainian Leonid Karchenko remain at large. Pulatov's lawyers are seeking to obtain testimony from more witnesses to examine other possible scenarios. So far, his lawyer says they have been unable to meet with him in person and share details of the investigation because COVID-19 restrictions make it impossible to travel to Russia, where he resides. Moscow always denies blame for the crash and proposes a range of alternative explanations which the Dutch lead team of international investigators rejected. Myanmar shut schools after report new coronavirus infections. 
Myanmar orders all schools to close after reporting 17 new coronavirus infections as authorities try to tackle a resurgence of the virus following weeks without confirmed domestic transmission. One of the new cases announces in the western state of Rakhine, fine in the nine different locations, each links to an outbreak in the state capital Situé, where a lockdown and a curfew are applied. Even though we are believed to have a decent immune system against the infection, the children are vulnerable. I'm real happy that the school is closed. Other people may have a different opinions, but for me, it is a good precautionary measure. The school is closed just temporarily. The students have many years ahead to study. The precaution against the virus infection is much more important for all of us. But some other parents believe that taking preventive measures will be more important for the time being. As a parent of a student, I think going to school is the only chance for them to actually study. I'm afraid that the student may not pay attention to their studies if the school keeps closed. But anyway, the closure of the schools is good to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. A resident of South Sue Sing Line says that the whole country get a shock by the unexpected number of 70 positive cases in Situe, Rakhine. The whole country got a shock by the unexpected number of 70 positive cases in Situe, Rakhine. We have concerns and are on high alert. It has happened because people have been careless. We have been taking it easy, thinking it won't happen. From now on, we all have to be careful and take precautions nationwide. If we don't take precautions, the situation will be uncontrollable. Myanmar's outbreaks have relatively small compared with other countries in the region, with just six deaths and 574 infections in total. The South Korean continue tighten up measures to curb COVID-19 spread. The South Korean government will strengthen epidemic control measures starting to contain the rapid spread of COVID-19 due to the ineffectiveness of current measures in the metropolitan area. The Korean Epidemic Prevention Department announces that South Korea reports 323 newly confirmed cases. South Korean Minister of Health and Welfare Park Nyung ho says the number of confirmed cases in the metropolitan area is still rising rapidly and will further strengthen epidemic prevention measures in the metropolitan area. Dining service will be forbidden at chain coffee shops in the metropolitan area. Operations of indoor sports facilities such as gyms, billiards halls, and indoor golf driving ranges will also be temporarily suspended. In addition, in order to prevent infections among the elderly and children, sanitariums will be forbidden for visits and nurseries will be closed. The South Korean government implemented the second phase of social distancing policy, banning gatherings of 50 people indoors and 100 people outdoors and closing public facilities and high-risk areas. The Singapore takes aim to record dengue with more mosquitoes. An environment official opens a jar containing about 150 lab-reared male mosquitoes and releases them into the air just outside a public housing block in Singapore. These special bred mosquitoes are Singapore's latest weapon in combating a record outbreak of the tropical dengue disease across the city-state. The Ang Li Ching, head of the project Wolbachia, explains, releasing male Aedes aegypti mosquitoes infected with the bacteria Wolbachia allows them to be mating competitors with wild mosquitoes. Being biologically incompatible with eggs laid by the females will not hatch, thereby leading to a gradual reduction of the mosquito population in the community. Well, I'm a little bit skeptical about it. Um, it worked in northern Queensland, where the population density is really low. But, you know, in a city like Singapore, which has such a high population density, um, is it, very challenging because you've got to flood the island with these, uh, these mosquitoes. Uh, and, and people get annoyed when they see a mosquito. You know, you, you, you tell them this is a sterile male mosquito, they're, they're not going to be able to tell the difference. They're not going to grab the mosquito and examine and see whether it's a male or female. So they're going to swat them away and that kind of defeats the purpose of your, uh, of your project. So it is a bit challenging uh, to see how it's going to work in Singapore. Some areas with high mosquito populations have seen up to 90% declines using these techniques. So this mosquito that we release are male Aedes aegypti, 
which is a main vector of dengue. Um, and this mos male mosquito carry Wabakia. In the field, they don't carry Wabakia. So when the male mosquito mate with the female in the field, they are not compatible. Um, so the eggs that are laid by the female are not uh, viable. They don't hatch. So if you can imagine, if we continue to release this male Wabakia mosquitoes into the field, compete with the wild type, mate with the female, uh, you will get a, a gradual reduction of mosquito pop population in the community, right? A lot of people are staying home working during the circuit breaker time, um, work from home due to COVID-19. And because Aedes aegypti is an indoor mosquito, and um, people who could have gone to work in an air-conditioned environment are now staying home or in their neighbourhood. So the Again, the probability of interaction between the human and the mosquito uh, may have increased as well and could have contributed to the ongoing outbreak. In places where we used to have high mosquito population, high Aedes aegypti population, we have seen a reduction of up to 90%. In terms of mosquito population, we have seen a suppression in areas where we have released. And that's, of course, in comparison with historical data and with other areas that have no release. Um, in air, and some of these places, we have also sustained the low level, unprecedented. These places used to have high level historically and today, for more than a year, we have seen this kind of low level. And of course, that translates to then lower dengue risk. 20 people dead of disease, which can use extreme fever that leads to internal bleeding and shock. The strategy has been successful in Australia, but some experts say it might have its limits in densely urbanized areas like Singapore. Infectious disease expert Paul Tambia, senior consultant at Singapore's National University Hospital, says he's a bit skeptical about the project. Singapore, a tiny Southeast Asian island nation of 5.7 million people, records more than 26,000 dengue cases this year, surpassing the previous annual record of around 22,000 in 2013, with four months still remaining. Thailand minister says clamp down won't stop its Facebook plans to fight order. Thailand's digital minister vows no relent in a crackdown on social media content deemed illegal and says it unlikely Facebook will follow through on plans to challenge an order to block access to a group critical of the Thailand monarchy. The Royalist Marketplace Group, which have over 1 million members, was blocked within Thailand after the digital ministry threatened legal action against Facebook under the country's Computer Crime Act. The tension comes amid near-daily youth-led protests against the government of a former junta chief, during which some demonstrators have made unprecedented calls for reforms of the monarchy, which is illegal to insult in Thailand. If they start a new group, do anything illegal again, or post anything that violates the Computer Crime Act, we'll need to act again. This is the system that we adhere to under the same standards for everyone. We don't just stop halfway. We'll keep doing this no matter how many times it takes. Thai Digital Minister says the ministry did not just make this all up or bully anyone with the Computer Crime Act. The ministry did not just make this all up or bully anyone with the Computer Crime Act. We use Thai laws to protect Thailand's sovereignty, which is in this modern day, does not come in the form of a land demarcation anymore. It's what we call a cyber sovereignty. It is a threat that spreads fast and causes damage to the Thai people. It is imperative that we implement the law intensively. He says he encouraged Facebook by compliance with the deadline to act on a court order which are attached to government requests to block content locally. He wants Facebook's Thailand office of possible cybercrime charges if the orders are not observed. Thailand royalists really to support monarchy amid calls for reforms. About 1,200 yellow and white clad Thai royalists rallied to show support for the monarchy following almost daily student-led anti-government protests calling for change, with some seeking reforms of the powerful institution. We 
we think that the country's conflicts stem from politicians. The institution of the monarchy has no part in governing the country. The institution is the moral support that connects the people together. The problems we are facing now were all started by the politicians who abuse power, cause corruption, or set a divide among the people. The gathering follows over a month of protest led by students calling for the ouster of Prime Minister Prayut Chang Ocha, a former group leader, and demand a new constitution and fresh election with some drawing more than 10,000 protesters. Some of those demonstrators have openly called for reforms of the monarchy, a taboo topic in a country with a strict law that punishes perceived royal insults with up to 15 years in prison. And he adds, the problems we are facing now are all started by the politicians who abuse power, cause corruptions, or set a divide among the people. Thai Pak De has also said three demands, no dissolution of parliament, maximum legal action against anyone who seeks to topple the monarchy, no change to the constitution except via the proper channel. At least 13 people dead and wound over 70 people at the bombing in the Philippine South. The military says a bombing in a town on the steep southern Philippine islands kills and wounds over 70 people, among soldiers and civilians, with Islamist militants suspected of being behind the attack. Two explosions believed to be homemade bombs are triggered within one hour in the main urban center on the island of Jolo, a stronghold of the Abu Sayyaf, a militant group that has pledged allegiance to the Islamic State. Photos and videos provided to Reuters show the aftermath of the blast, which hit two military trucks. Authority says that the bomb are attached to a parked motorcycle. There are no immediate claims of responsibility, and police says an investigation are underway. Abu Sayyaf was founded in 1990s. It is active in the Sulu archipelago of Mindanao, where hundreds of military are deployed to try to destroy the group, which is linked to the Islamic State and Al Qaeda. TikTok thrives in Indonesia, but United States and India opting for a ban. It took to Tigrain's Sandi Saputra just over a year to become one of TikTok's biggest Indonesian star, leaping from 30,000 followers in 2019 to 10.1 million followers. The popularity of his dancing and lip syncing skits. Of course, I'd be disappointed if TikTok removed. That platform helps people build their confidence, their hobbies. It helps people who are shy become more confident. According to Samuel Abrijani Pangarapan, Director General of Informatics Application of Indonesian Ministry of Communication and Information Technology, TikTok adequately complies with Indonesian regulatory law in regards to the operation of the app and its management of users' personal data. TikTok gives space to self-expression and in my opinion this is a good thing because regulations in Indonesia are regulations related to content and of course also related to users' personal data. We have reviewed TikTok in regards to its management of personal data and its rule to comply with the GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation Laws. In Indonesia, every application must register under these laws. Indonesia and other Southeast Asian countries are among TikTok's fastest growing markets with a collective population of 630 million. So uh, I, I think I want to iterate that Southeast Asia is a very important market for TikTok uh, with or without uh, what is happening uh, around us. And this is given to one, the sheer diversity of the cultures and the rich uh, creativity that we are seeing in Southeast Asia. Two, uh, that Southeast Asia is truly a mobile first uh, region. 90% uh, of the internet users connect to the internet using their mobile phone. And of course, uh, TikTok is a mobile first uh, app. And three, we are seeing that uh, users and communities here really uh, embrace and enjoy the format of short form video content. Um, so because of these various reasons, Southeast Asia will continue to uh, be an important market for us. TikTok users say TikTok helps users to be more creative and they can create more content. Membuat penggunanya lebih kreatif. TikTok helps users to be more creative so they can create more content. And it not only contains dancing, but also academic content, artificial intelligence, tips and tricks, and it is available to people from all walks of life. I only hope TikTok can pay more attention to filtering content according to users' age. That will be better. Reuters reported in August that from 2018 until 2020, ByteDance censors content is perceived as critical of the Chinese government on its news aggregator app in Indonesia, Babe, at the behest of ByteDance's China headquarters. That has often meant strict censorship of local political content. 
According to data from apt analytics firm Sensor Tower, TikTok has had more than 360 million downloads in Southeast Asia. And that's all for today. Have a lovely weekend. We'll see you soon.